good evening ladies and welcome. I gotta move that a minute because otherwise you'll only see the top of my head. Hello girls and welcome to our ladies meeting, our sisters of strength. I have no idea how much longer we'll be continuing on in this way with our weekly ladies meetings because of course we always used to have our sisters of strength meeting once a month until the lockdown and then we've gone to every week so i am praying earnestly about what the lord would have us to do whether he'd have us to go back to once a month stay every week once a fortnight so i would really be grateful if you if you would join with me in praying about that because at the moment at the moment i'm really uncertain about what to do so but for now we are until the lord tells us otherwise we will just carry on and spend our Tuesday evenings together looking at the Lord's Word, which is a blessing to be able to know that you were there with me and to spend it with some of my best friends in all the world. So let's open up in a word of prayer, girls, and we'll dive straight into the Lord's Word. Precious Saviour, thank you so much, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this time that we can come into your very presence, Lord, that we can come into the presence of a holy God, Lord, clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, in royal robes that we are so undeserving of. For you love us, you care for us, you faithfully um, take care of us, Lord, and we just thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence in prayer. Thank you for this precious word that we hold in our hands. Thank you that it can speak to our hearts. It can reach us, Lord, and as a living word, and just deal with each of us and meet our needs perfectly, and we just thank you and praise you for that. We ask now at this time, Lord, you remove all distractions and any diversionary thoughts from us and we would concentrate our hearts fully upon you, that we would gaze upon you through your word and we learn more about you and love you more as a result of what you teach us here tonight. And Lord, whatever you do, we give you all the honour, the glory and the praise. Thank you, Lord, in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, girls. So we're going to get straight in with our study tonight. So last week, do you remember last week, we ended the book of 1 Samuel. We're looking at the life of David, as we know. And we ended last week, we looked at anger, Abigail and atonement, didn't we? And then we kind of summarised and went to the end of the book. And we, when we left David, we... It was a good place last week, wasn't it? Because we left him and he just um, reconciled with the Lord after what had been that really difficult year and a half for him where he'd been living in that Philistine camp. And then when we, after we talked about that reconciliation that he had with the Lord and the hope that he gave us, we kind of like, I just went skim like this um, over the end of the chapter and told you that Saul had died. And, but I don't know if I told you that Jonathan um, had died the same day as Saul. So Jonathan, David's friend, Saul's son, and Saul's other two sons had died in battle that day, and then Saul had died by pulling himself upon his sword and dropping himself down and pulling himself upon his sword. So Saul had died and Jonathan had died as well. And now we stand now, girls, because we're going to the next, the natural thing would be to be to carry on going straight now into Second Samuel. So we stand really, I suppose, now on like a precipice of these kingdom years of David being king. Um, but we are not going to look at them tonight. We were going to start and dive straight in to these kingdom years, I'll call them. We'll call them the fugitive years and the kingdom years. And we we're going to dive straight into there. Um, but we're not going to tonight because the Lord has got different ideas for us. Um, as we know, girls, we've talked about, haven't we, over the weeks, that David wrote a number of psalms. And we don't know exactly when they were written. I said that I like to go through David's psalms after reading David's life story and see kind of where we think they might have been written. But we don't know. Um but they are also packed with wonderful teaching. So I kind of want us to just unwrap one of these psalms together this evening. When I say I want us to unwrap one of these psalms, the Lord wants us to unwrap one of these psalms because that's all he's laid on my heart for this past week is this psalm. So we're going to look at it together this evening. So ladies, will you turn with me to Psalm 42, please? Now, I spoke um, on this psalm a couple of years ago in ladies' meeting, but 
as I just said, for some reason this week, the Lord has kept bringing it to my remembrance when I've been trying to study at the beginning of our kingdom years and the Lord is bringing me back here and I feel really compelled that I have to share this with you tonight, girls. And this psalm, Psalm 42, talks about being downcast and I'm going to be completely honest and open with you girls as always I've prayed the words of this psalm countless times more times than I can remember talk to myself the words of this psalm pray the words of this psalm so many times over the years and I don't know about you it's about being downcast then I don't know about you but I found myself praying these words quite frequently over the last few months because it's been a really strange time for all of us, isn't it? Um, this lockdown period has been different for everybody's got their own different um, things that they've de dealt with, things that they've battled with, challenges that they've faced. You know, some of us, um, the lockdown for some has been a really busy time of trying to fit in normal, you know, work in a home environment and then trying to fit in home life and um, homeschooling the kids and that's been like a busy challenges and then some the this lockdown period has brought like real um, times of loneliness and isolation so that's been difficult challenges that people have faced and then um, I suppose this made some people really um, have to what would we say? Um, have to deal with things differently because people who may have been independent have now had to rely upon others and so they've had to deal with the, um, the worries and the fears of being a burden to other people even though I'm sure they're not. Um, and the feeling that having your independence taken away from you um, brings, so we, the lockdown has brought a huge, Covid-19 has brought a huge an array of different challenges to each of us, I'm sure, hasn't it? And while we've used this time, and I know everybody I've spoken to, all of you that I've spoken to, we've used this time to grow in our relationship with the Lord, and lots of people have said they felt closer to the Lord, they've prayed more, they've learned more, they've studied more than ever before. And um, as we have had that beautiful benefit, we must admit that these challenges have been some very difficult emotions that we've had to deal with at times as well. So Psalm 42, girls, that we're going to look at tonight, it doesn't name David as the author, but it is believed by countless um, Bible commentators, Ami as well, that this is one of David's psalms because it sounds like David, the language, the speech, um, the implication it all, it just seems to me and to a lot of other Bible commentators um, who are far cleverer than I am, that it is David's psalm. So I'm going to treat it as a psalm of David and I, you will see, I'll explain to you why I think it's one of David's psalms as we delve a little deeper. Um, they have, as David's psalm and is talking about being downcast, there is, just think of what we've learned of David so far, girls. There's been plenty of occasions, haven't there, for David to feel these similar emotions and challenging feelings that we faced this last few months when we think of what David has been through in this ascent to the kingdom, to be king. There's been a lot of different emotions and feelings that he um, has had to cope with as well, the same as we are. So um, the words that I've prayed... Um, I found in verse 5, and they are, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? And I don't know about you girls, but I've said those words to myself very, very many times over the years, and quite often in this last few months. So there, that is kind of the theme of our message for tonight, but I just want us to read through the psalm a minute. It's only um, 11 verses, so we'll just read through the psalm first. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so my soul pant so, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is thy God? Just think of all these feelings that invoke these words, girls. 
When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, in me, for I had gone with a multitude. I went with them to the house of God, and with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites, and from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep, at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies approach, reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health or the salvation of my countenance and my God. And I just pray that the Lord would bless the reading of that word to our hearts, girls, as we, as we think and we meditate on it now tonight. So let's look back up to the beginning of the chapter there by way of introduction. Does everybody have the caption written over um, above Psalm 42, which says book two? Why am I pausing there like you can answer me? Um, my Bible says, yeah, book two. And I've never noticed this before, but the Psalms are made up of five books. And each section closes, as you can see in the closure of 41, each section closes with um, a doxology by saying like, praise the Lord or amen. That's just a little bit of interesting information that I found out there, girls. And as you may know, the Psalms span at least 500 years. It's not certain why they divided into these five books. Um, is it to cover different time periods or different topics? Everybody seems to have their own idea as to what it is. But Jewish tradition suggests that it's um, to line up with the five books of the Torah. And I don't know if it is, but that's just an interesting note there. And in my Bible, it also says, it gives it the title, the Maskil. And that means um, a psalm of instruction. A masculine psalm is a psalm which is meant to instruct people. And the instruction here, girls, I really believe, is that God can be trusted in tough times. You can hear that, can't you? As we read through that, you can hear David sounding hopeless and then hopeful. And he's, he seems to have, his faith is wavering and then his faith is strong. And it seems to go like that. So we can really learn from this. You can see why it is a time of instruction that, and the instruction is that the Lord can be relied on in the tough times of our lives. And it was written for the sons of Korah. And the sons of Korah um, were the musicians um, in this day. And so it was intended to be set to music and to be sung. So David's question to himself is, why art thou cast down, O my soul? So it's obvious, girls, isn't it, from this, that um, David is discouraged and down. That's pretty obvious to us, isn't it, from reading this. He's not saying he's in any physical pain, is he? But he's saying he's in pain down deep. Soul pain, can we say. And I think the things that hurt our heart and soul are often far worse than a physical accident or an injury, do you? And why is that? Because this pain seems to um, when something hurts our heart, it seems to linger, doesn't it? And I know it's not visible, um, but then it makes it not noticeable and not easily fixable. Um, now, I want us to look at this psalm tonight from a shepherd's perspective, girls, um, because in describing his despair to us, David uses that term, cast down. And that is a shepherd's term. That is what a shepherd would use. And I believe that there is an exact, um, he's making an exact parallel here between a sheep, because sheep would become cast down, to a sheep becoming cast down and a soul becoming cast down. And so that's why I really believe that this was written by the shepherd of Israel, our David. 
um, a sheep girls is referred to as being cast down when it is flat on his back with his feet right up in the air, all his feet in the air. If sheep are completely upturned like that, completely upside down, they are stuck. They can't do anything for themselves, they can't help themselves, they can't get themselves up or over. Sheep are cast down when they are flat on their backs and stuck. And according to a shepherd, that is one of the most awful, pathetic conditions that a sheep can get into. And David would have known how awfully perilous it would be for a sheep to remain in this condition, wouldn't he? Because he was a shepherd. And now he's talking to himself as saying, why art thou cast down? You know, he's talking to his own heart and thinking of this cast down sheep as well. Um, and so I want us to look, girls, for a moment here at a few extra things um, that I've learned by studying about this cast down sheep and I want to share them with you because they've really really spoken to my heart and I hope and pray that they will speak to your heart as well. Um, so let's just look, look at what we can learn from a cast down sheep for a moment to say. Um, first of all a cast down sheep is pathetic as I just said. Imagine it girls, just imagine the scene, a sheep upside down, they would flail about frantically with his feet but there is nothing they can do they cannot get up they lash around with their body because they're frightened and the more they lash around the more they get frustrated and the faster they try and move and they get exhausted and apparently it is really pathetic for a shepherd to have to watch a sheep in this way and it's something that the shepherd really really doesn't like to see so the shepherd has to keep a constant eye on the sheep because he knows the dangers. But it's not only pathetic, it's also perilous. It's really perilous, girls. It's dangerous for a sheep to remain in this cast down position because sheep have a first chamber in their stomachs called a rumen. And in the rumen, microorganisms break down grass before it's returned to the mouth as cud. But when the sheep is cast down, the rumen actually presses down on the sheep's heart, which is right behind it when it's on its back. And it slows the blood flow down to the animal's extremities and it causes the extremities to go dead first. And then gases build up in the stomach and the stomach becomes hardened hardened until the um, the air passage is cut off and the sheep will eventually suffocate if it remains like that. So it is perilous, it's pathetic for a sheep to remain in this way and it is perilous for a sheep to remain in this way. And of course it's not just perilous because the sheep can't survive in that condition within its own body is perilous obviously because think how easy pickings that sheep is for um predators um so it's perilous from an external point of view as well it's really perilous um the sheep is easy picking for pre predators think of um wolves and um ravens and vultures Ra i said ravens then i don't know if ravens are dangerous birds vultures and um, lions and things that were in the wilderness think how dangerous it would be how easy pickings they would be for the enemy if they just were stayed there on their back and all so do you agree girls that if a cast down sheep remains in this condition for very long it will most certainly die i'm sure you agree because a shepherd has told us that it is really dangerous and let me give you a quick, from a shepherd's perspective again, let me give you a quick um, couple of reasons why a sheep would end up in this condition. First of all, a sheep would sometimes, sorry, I didn't give that very explanation very good then. So the shepherd that I was reading, I was reading a shepherd's account of a cast down sheep and the shepherd that I was reading said that there are two common reasons why a sheep becomes cast down and these are what happens most and what happens first of all a sheep 
will sometimes look for or often look for and lie down in a sort of um, soft spot that fits his body, sort of like an indentation somewhere. And he likes to get comfortable. He may roll over on his side for a while and then he can get back up if he's just on his side. But then on his side, he might try and find that comfortable spot. It might roll around trying to find that comfortable place and may accidentally roll over on his back and then is that's where he gets in trouble. And oh ladies, I'm certain, before me even saying anything to you about this, I'm certain just from hearing about these cast down sheep, you can see the parallels between a cast down sheep and our cast down hearts or our cast down souls and how dangerous they are for us as well. Um, what a lesson it is for us here, girls. How often do we look for a comfortable place in life? We kind of want everything to be easy and soft and just like a perfect fit. And we do this spiritually, we do it physically and we do it spiritually as well. And sometimes we keep on going until we find our rut. We just find our comfortable place, nothing that requires too much effort, nothing that takes up too much of our strength, everything that we can just manage happily and we settle down and we take it easy. But it's so easy for us to become cast down when we get into that comfortable spot. And Amos 6.1 says, Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. And that is quite a stark and painful um, scripture to read, isn't it? Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. That says, we'd like to say, wouldn't we? We'd prefer to say, happy are those who are at ease, that don't have any troubles or fears, that are just in a nice, comfortable little rut in life. But it doesn't say that at all. That scripture says, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. It doesn't say that a Christian comfort zone, a life of ease, is what we should be aiming for. But so often we are trying to get into that comfortable spot. But that can be dangerous for us girls. It can be easy for us to be cast down from there. Um, so if we get too comfortable in our own self-righteousness, if everything in life only happens um, and it never stretches us, should we say, spiritually, and it never takes us out of ourselves and causes us to rely on the Lord, we can quickly become self-righteous um, and we can become unaware of Satan's schemes going on around us. Um, we like to get comfortable and to not get involved, but when we do, we are finding our soft spot, girls. We are finding our comfortable spot and there is danger that lies there because the enemy of our soul, just like those predators, is on the prowl and he is seeking who he can destroy. Because when we get too comfortable, we lose our determination. We lose, if our life is too easy, we lose our fortitude, we lose our endurance. Um, and girls, if we find a soft spot it is easy for us to become cast down and we will need somebody to get us off our back or the enemy will take advantage of us. So reasons that the sheep become cast down, there's only two. That was trying to look at a comfortable spot, looking for ease and comfort. And then the second thing that will cause a sheep to become cast down is too much wool. If the wool has grown too long, it picks up rocks and bits of bush and wet leaves and all kinds of stuff. And then all of that gets matted in with dirt and mud and the matted sheep, just imagine that scene, the matted sheep will get so weighted that all it wants to do is lie down. And when it does, because of all that weight is carrying on, it will quickly flip over onto its back. And when it's ready to get up, it just can't. And oh my goodness, ladies, what a vivid illustration of why we may become cast down, don't you think? Just think of it. Wool represents a sheep's nature, doesn't it? Sheep grow wool. It's what they're famous for, really. But then there comes a time when the sheep willingly gives away its wool, its dirt and grime to the shepherd. Sheep don't like that, always. 
Um, but then that was making me think, could it be at times that we find ourselves cast down because we are carrying about too much dirt and grime and weight? It's our nature to do that, just like it's the sheep's nature to grow wool. It's our nature to carry that old sin around with us. Um, it's what comes naturally to us, isn't it, if we're honest? But um, we should be trying to avoid it. Um, we may be collecting it when we find ourselves in a tough spot. We may be collecting this dirt and grime and everything like worry or fear or feeling hard done by or unforgiveness. It's all dirt and grime and sin, girls. And we don't always want to yield it to the shepherd. We don't always want to get it taken care of, get taken away from us, get it sheared off to give it up. But we must, otherwise we will be more prone to become cast down and then when we cast down we're going to be defenseless to the wires of the devil so david was familiar with how pathetic and perilous it was for a sheep to become cast down wasn't wasn't he and so he was alertly aware that if he was feeling cast down it would equally have a damaging effect on him why art thou cast down O my soul why art thou disquieted within me? He said to himself, and I'm sure in his mind he had this cast down sheep at this very moment and he was thinking of the peril and how pathetic that was and how easy pickings to predators he would be, how easily open he was leaving himself to the enemy to remain in that cast down position. Um, when, I'm sure, so, sorry, I've written down here, I'm sure when he was feeling cast down, he wanted to be out on that, of that situation, just like we do, and back on his feet, um, so to speak. And when the sheep is ca cast down, girls, there is no hope unless the shepherd comes along and lifts it back up onto his feet. And that is what the shepherd do. That is, does, that is how the shepherd rescues these cast down sheep. And I'm sure that David is throwing himself on the mercy of his shepherd when he is penning these words down for us. Um, when I was studying this, I read about, and I was reading about sheep, I read that sheep, when they've been cast down for a long time, their legs go numb. I'm not saying like they died now, but when they've just been cast down before the shepherd had rescued them, um, their legs would go numb and they couldn't move. They froze, let's say. Um, so the shepherd would have to, what the shepherd would do would be flip the sheep back over and stand with the sheep in between his, I'm standing like I'm going to realise if I was going to stand there for you, stand with the sheep in between his knees and he would massage the sheep's legs until some, excuse me, some blood come back into them and still, till they came back to life a bit and then flip the sheep up and let it stand on its own. And there, even then, the sheep would sometimes, would oftentimes stumble and fall, but that shepherd would remain really close to pick that sheep back up and massage his legs all over again until it could walk on its own. And what a lovely picture that is of the um, attentiveness that our shepherd has for us girls and the care and the patience that he has with us. Um, wanting to work with us, wanting to rescue us. Um, ladies, when we are cast down, we can learn so much from these sheep, can't we? Our good shepherd wants to come along, he wants to lift us up. Imagine just for a minute the shepherd counting the sheep back into the fold like we do in that parable and, and one goes lost. Imagine um, the shepherd going out searching for that and when he finds it, he's filled with joy and concern because what if that sheep was cast down somewhere? But there's something really intensely endearing and intensely fraught about that picture, isn't there? Um, but our shepherd girls, just like the shepherd looking for that sheep and how his heart would have been yearning and urgency that would have been in his heart to find that sheep. Um, our shepherd always wants to rescue us girls and is waiting to rescue us in tenderness 
and love and he will work on us until we can walk on our own again. He wants to always restore us to our former condition and to rescue us from things that will potentially harm us. Do you just love this imagery? I love the way that David uses imagery. Remember we talked about him pouring out his heart and I love his imagery and I love this just thought of this cast down sheep. Um, so I think David teaches us some remarkable lessons here in this chapter um, about um, what to do, what we can do when we find ourselves cast down. And we're going to look at verse 11. Just look at the last verse of the chapter, girls. We're going to bring this to a close here this evening. But we're going to look at you at David's um, advice to us, what he's telling us, what he was talking to himself um, and telling him what his remedy to this cast down position was and how it can be a help to us. Um, first of all, girls, um, point number one, um, David asks himself an honest question, doesn't he? And we've seen him doing this frequently over the weeks. And I think that's his lesson that he really wants us to understand, an example he really wants us to follow. David says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And I think he is teaching us that we need to admit how we are feeling, no matter how disturbing it is, no matter how pathetic we think it is, we need to admit how we're feeling because we'll have a hard time dealing with something that we fail to acknowledge. Ask the Lord, girls, when we are cast down, ask the Lord to show us what the root of the problem is. You know, is it anger? Is it self-pity? Do we feel hard done by? Is it unforgiveness? Is it pride? Is it worry? What is the root of our problem? What is making us feel cast down? Whatever it is that made us feel this way in the first place, we need to ask the Lord to show us why art thou cast down on my soul and then be open to deal with what he reveals. And then look in our verse, um, I think he's, David says, Ask yourself some honest questions and then look upward because he says, hope thou in God. Instead of staying focused on your bad situation, um, your, your mood, um, you need to focus. We need to focus on the one who knows the way out. We need to focus on the shepherd. Um, a thought occurred to me the other day. Remember last week when we said about... Um, David was li listening to the wrong confidant because he was listening to himself when he was in that awful situation he was this week and then things went really badly, didn't they? Um, so I looked at David's Psalms this week for like the hinge, um, for the change, what causes a turn of events um, in David's life from being hopeful, from being hopeless to hopeful, really. And there's often, there is this hinge and what is, I've seen a common thread here, girls, is more often than no, not, it involves David talking to himself instead of listening to himself. It's quite intriguing when you look at it. And I think, truthfully, girls, that most of my unhappiness in life, if I admit it to you, is due to the fact that I am listening to myself instead of talking to myself. I don't think I'm really nuts, do it? Um, for example, what I mean is just think of those thoughts that come to you the moment that you wake up in the morning. On a bad day, you haven't planned them, but nevertheless, there they are and they talk into you. Maybe they bring back the problems of yesterday and somebody is talking to you and it's you, isn't it, really? But David here, instead of listening to himself, begins talking to himself, doesn't he? He tells himself, hope thou in God, David. He's saying, why art thou cast down? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. And the dictionary defines hope as something good that we must wait for. An expectant anticipation of what we believe will happen. We know God loves us. We know God cares for us. We know God can work all things out for our good, for his glory, and that whatever the difficulty may be on the path in front of us, that the Lord will walk 
that way with us, that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. So we can always have hope in God. And then thirdly, David says, praise God. So he tells us, ask yourself some honest questions, look upward and praise God. He says, for I shall yet praise him. And I don't mean by this, girls, I don't think David means stay under, hidden under your duvet, listening to Christian music full blast. I mean, um, what do I mean? By praise God, sorry, I've written what I've written down here, it sounds a bit harsh, so I don't want to say it. But it, I, it means, what I think David means by this is that is, when we praise God, we often think of... Um, lifting our voice and worshipping God and focusing on God instead of focusing on ourselves and it is so powerful isn't it as we talked about the week before last there is so much power contained within praising God and we often associate praising God with being with God's people and having reasons to praise God from each other and corporately praising God in worship and I think that is important girls as we've said it is a tactic of the enemy to isolate the sheep but it is never what the Lord intends and David says praise I shall yet praise him he's looking for reasons to praise the Lord and so should we it doesn't doesn't do us good to stay self-focused it does us good to stay others focused to champion a cause outside of ourselves oftentimes and to praise God, to find something to praise God for. And then fourthly, there's only five points, fourthly, he says, have hope that he will help you really, because the next bit says, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And can you hear the certainty in David's voice here, girls? I know God will help me. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance it sounds so certain doesn't it it's like David saying I know God will help me I know this situation is bad I know I'm in a dark and difficult place but this cast down is not a good place for me to stay it's not a profitable profitable place for me to remain and my God will help me and he will girls when he um Hope says, listen, self, if God is for you, who can be against you? That's what hope says when we speak it to ourselves, really. He who gave up his own son for you, girls, walks with you every day. And we have to hope in him with this certainty. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance, this certainty that David tells us. And then the last point, resist bitterness. Um, and I really believe that that is something we've got to do, girls. We've got to um, really exercise self-control. When we are cast down, we can often become cynical and critical and angry and bitter. Um, but we've got to resist that. Look at verse 5 and verse 11 for a second. Those similar verses there. Verse 5 says, for the help of his countenance. And verse 11 says, who is the health of my countenance and my God. And I so, so love this important teaching that I think I've missed a hundred times. That the Lord is the health of our countenance. When we hope in God, our whole countenance is healthier, isn't it? Um when our hopes are dashed, resentment can set in and we need to resist bitterness, girls, and hope in God. So ladies, in closing, do you believe in the shepherd? I know you do and I know you love him as well. So I guess at times like this, the question is, do you trust the shepherd? Do you have hope in him that what you are going through, that what is making you feel cast down, if we turn it over to him, that it can be used um, for our learning, for our benefit and for his glory as well. And do you trust him, girls? Do you trust the shepherd that he loves you enough not to want to see you in this pathetic 
and perilous condition that he wants to rescue you and help you and get you back onto you, is your feet. Um, he certainly does. But just think of this, girls. I said in closing then, and then I carried on. Think of this. Um, do you see, just imagine this, that when the sheep is cast down, that it kicks and squirms and twists and expels all its efforts to try and remedy the state that it's in, doesn't it? But after it's done trying, it lies still and exhausted. And doesn't that make us think that maybe that's what we do sometimes, girls? We get cast down and then we get exhausted trying to expel all of our effort, trying to work this situation out for ourselves instead of just hoping in God, instead of casting ourselves on the mercy of the, se of the shepherd. Maybe our kicks and squirms look like anger or worry or playing a situation over and over or doubt or frustration, whatever our kicks and squirms that can get us all exhausted, truthfully. Um, but what we need to do is trust in the shepherd, call on him, call out to him, be honest with him, be open with him and ask him for his help because, he's, because he is there waiting to rescue and help us. As we know the very familiar verse in Isaiah 40, those 31 girls. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Think of that as a sheep. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I love that girls. I love that that verse doesn't say that we will get strength. But that we will just renew strength. It is there. It's already there. It hasn't gone away. And if we cast ourselves on the mercy of the shepherd, uh, we'll find that strength flooding back into our souls as he rescues us from a cast down position. Let's pray, will we? Precious Saviour, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your teaching, Lord. Thank you through this one psalm, all that you have in there for us and all that you can teach us. Lord, help us, Lord, not to remain in these cast-down positions that I'm sure we've all found ourselves in, more so of late than ever, maybe. But we, we will to come, and we have, Lord, been in this cast-down position. Help us to remember how pathetic and how perilous this cast-down sheep was at this time, and help us to hope in you, Lord, and to trust you, and to cast ourselves on out you and mercy, and to be honest about how we feel. And thank you, Lord, that you promise to rescue us. You promise to never leave us. Thank you, Good Shepherd. We love you, we praise you, and we ask all of these things in Christ's beautiful and matchless name. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me, and I hope that this cast down hasn't been too depressing for you, but I hope it's been informative and it's helped you the way in that it's helped me. And I hope the next time we feel ourselves going, we'll think of David and his cast down sheep. Good night, ladies. God bless. And for those of us who are back in church, see you tomorrow night. Love you.